So this is the Palm Official Sermon on Palm Sunday. Today is the longest uh, day of the year, the longest of the Masses of the year. But today, a few considerations on the on Actually, it's interesting today, the mystery of Palm Sunday, that uh, on this day we actually have uh, two Masses, two Masses instead of one Mass. And the first Mass is the Mass before Mass, in which it's a reminder that the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is always the crucifixion. Every time you go to Mass, you do not attend the Last Supper. You don't attend the Supper of the Lord. You don't attend the Table of the Lord, like they say in the Modernist New Church. But you attend the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Mass is always the renewal of the crucifixion. And we're reminded of that during the Mass today. And, that, uh, and so that the central part of the Mass today is the reading of the Passion, the Gospel. And also we see on Palm Sunday how our prayers, our actions... And our sacrifice are one. Remember that, that St. Bonaventure says, wherever you see Catholic, you're always going to see triunity, three one. Wherever there's Catholic, there's three one. And so that, that our prayers, our beliefs, our faith, our actions, <clears throat> our actions, and our worship of sacrifice equals identical. It's the cross, the cross, and the cross. And we see that here on this on, on the mystery of Palm Sunday, it summarizes it. And the church also focuses primarily on the crucifixion, even though we're going to bless the palms and hand out the palms. Uh, and, uh, you know, for um, in a massive uh, crowd in California, so that, uh, you know, we're going to massive, massive hand out the palms uh, for, the, uh, for the Palm Sunday. And yet the, 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 the focus is going to be primarily on the crucifixion of our Lord. And so we have a Mass before Mass. The Mass begins with a kind of introit. And the introit by which all the people praise God, Hosanna Fidi David. So we begin with walking in, and we're going to have a Mass. But we're having Mass without the crucifixion. And so we're going to be handing palms. We're going to be singing beautiful hymns. You're going to hear a Sanctus. But after the Sanctus, there's going to be no crucifixion. And St. Thomas Aquinas points out that when we pray during the canon of the Mass, we pray for all those that are actually saved. Which is why we say in the true Mass, pro multis in the consecration, that he died for you and for many unto the remission of sins. Christ died for all, but not all have the remission of sins. And so we have a remembrance of a very serious truth here on Palm Sunday, that all Catholics and all Jews of the Old Testament, except those that all went off of the worship of Baal, but all Catholics and all Jews of the Old Testament, all of them worship the true God. All of them say, Hosanna to the Son of David. But not all of them benefit from the crucifixion. So we come into the beginning of the Mass, we sing a Hosanna, it sounds just like an introit. And then there's incense into the altar, so we don't have the incense, we're not doing the incense, but there's, there's the uh, incense into the altar, just like we do at the beginning of Mass. And then there's a collect, and then there's an epistle, and then there's a gospel, very just normal gospel. And the gospel will be the gospel of Palm Sunday, and then a prayer, and then and then the singing of the preface, the familiar preface, and after the preface, the Sanctus, very familiar, Mass is going on, and then after the Sanctus, there'll be a blessing of the palms, but there'll be no crucifixion. And then we're going to walk outside, and we're, for the friends of God, we walk outside with Christ, with palms. We come back and the doors are shut. We come back and heaven is closed. Everybody is at the beginning of Mass. Not everybody is at the end. We have three divisions of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. There's the Mass of the Catechumens. And here we consider the Mass of the Catechumens, not only those who are studying for the faith, but all those Catholics who became Catholic, they got baptized, they went to the ceremony. They know it very well. They can sing the music. They can swing the incense. They can serve the Mass. They can do everything beautifully, but they never entered the sacrifice. And there are so many Catholics like that. That's why we read another time in the, in the, in the sacred liturgy from St. Paul. He says, I will not have you ignorant, brethren. All the Jews were under the cloud. All ate the same spiritual food, the manna. All drank the same spiritual drink that came from the rock that Moses struck twice in the desert. But with most of them, God was not well pleased. And we're reminded of that on Palm Sunday. 
They used to have an old grocery store, Father Hannah just talking about all the time, that was one of the first major grocery stores called A&P. And A&P was, was going to close out all the local grocery stores in the Northeast, shut them all down, and they built a big grocery store. And they said there's many kind of Catholics that are A&P Catholics. They only come to church when you can get something, Ash Wednesday and Palm Sunday. So a lot of Catholics show up on Ash Wednesday, a lot of Catholics show up on Palm Sunday, a lot of Catholics show up on Easter, except this year, because after all, there's good, we can't have an Easter celebration this year because of the coronavirus. And the Pope says it's okay, so it must be okay. We don't need Christ this year. Now the fact is that, this, that there will be many people that will go to the Mass, and they will not benefit from it. There are many people that receive Holy Communion, and it will not enter their souls. Many people that have the Catholic faith and say, Hosanna, the son of David, and they will not go to heaven. We will all hand out palms. The apostles held palms today. Some of the holy women held palms today. And the, everyone held palms today, except for the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They refused to hold the palms. But of those that held the palms... 99% of them, on Good Friday, what happened? These same people that held the palms on Sunday, they, they're the same ones on Friday that say, let him be crucified. The same one that says, thou art the king of Israel today, are the same ones that say, let his blood be upon us, upon our children on Friday. And we're all reminded that just because I got baptized, just because I go to the Latin Mass, just because I say my rosary, just because I believe in Jesus, does not mean I'm going to heaven. Doesn't mean that he has entered into my heart. Doesn't mean he's, he's taken over my being. For he who saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall not enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father. And we are taught this over and over again throughout our entire Catholic life. And so then Palm Sunday we're reminded of it. And so we read the Passion. We sing the Passion. The Passion will be the central part of the Mass. After this Mass, without Mass, we go outside. The Old Testament is a testament of death. They praised God, they offered sacrifices, but it didn't open the gates of heaven. We come back and we sing the Gloria Laus, and we beg the gates of heaven to be opened. Finally, at the end of singing five verses, they ask the gates of heaven to be opened, the cross bearer hits the door, and the gates of heaven are open, and we enter into the kingdom of heaven. And what's going to, what is heaven going to be? It's going to be the cross. The cross is our window into heaven. The cross is the door to heaven. The cross is the only way to happiness. And there is no other way. It's the only way to know truth. The only way to be good. The only way to have any happiness. The only way to heaven. So as we finally come in, we're going to then have a mass. We had a nice thing that looked like a mass at the beginning. Only it wasn't mass. And when we finished that thing that looked like mass at the beginning, we got locked out of the church. Now we come back in, and we're going to sing a song to us a second time. We're going to have an epistle a second time. We're going to have a gospel a second time. So there'll be two epistles, there'll be two introits, there'll be two gospels. And the great question of every Catholic is, which one did we attend? Including the priest of God. Which one did we attend? Did we attend the first one with palms? Or did we attend the second one with crucifixion? And we have to ask the grace to be among those who read the second one with the crucifixion. And then, of course, we read the, the, the singing of the Passion, beginning with the, with the Last Supper, continuing to the death of our Lord. And that's the centerpiece of the Mass today. And during the Passion, you hold the palms in your hands as a reminder that I am praising God right now. But how different am I from those that praise God on Palm Sunday? I hope I'm not just holding palms in my hand. I hope that somehow it enters into my heart. And so while we're singing or reading the Passion, we hold the palms in the hand. And then, and then the continuation and completion of the Mass. And also, a last thing for this particular uh, Palm Sunday, of, the, and then the, of this, this year of our, of our so-called crisis of the coronavirus, which is just like the, the Sasquatch uh, crisis of the Northwest. There, everybody is terrified of Sasquatch in the Northwest, as nobody's ever seen them. So here we have the great terror of the coronavirus, as nobody knows anybody who has it, and nobody knows anybody who knows anybody who has it, but it's really bad. Because we have to protect our health. But what about the health of our souls? And now, we are in the first time in the history of the United States since our country was founded, where people are afraid to go to church. For the first time in the history of our country. Now we're going to have to recognize 
that our ancestors were afraid to go to church for 2,000 years in many places. Now it's our turn to decide whether we want God or not, whether we're willing to face persecution or not. And now the persecution has begun. But we're not going to consider Holy Thursday, Holy Easter Sunday, or rather Palm Sunday itself. Remember on, on, on to do two few days before Palm Sunday, our Lord Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem. And what was the condition of the apostles? They were terrified. They were petrified. And why were they petrified? Because we're going to die. The last time they were in Jerusalem, they tried to stone Christ to death, throw him out of the temple. It was very bad. The rumor was when Christ came into town, they would kill him and the apostles. So when it, was, when it was said that Lazarus was sick, the apostles said, leave him sick. When the Lord said he was asleep, said, leave him sleeping. But don't go to Jerusalem. He said, no, I'm going to Jerusalem. And when they were on the way to Jerusalem, St. Thomas said the first words recorded of him in the sacred scripture. And he said to the other apostles, let us go and let us die with him. So consider on this Palm Sunday morning, what was in the heart of the apostles on Palm Sunday morning? They saw several things happen. In the very beginning of this morning, Christ went up on the top of the mountain of Olivet. It's recorded in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 9. And he looked down upon uh, the city of Jerusalem, and he wept. And he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how many times would I have gathered you under my arms, but thou wouldest not? The Jerusalem that killest the prophets, and all those that I have sent to thee, how many times would I have gathered you under my arms, or be like a chicken, a mother hen, with you under my wing, but thou wouldest not? Weeping, he went down in Jerusalem. Now, what about before that? Thomas says, we're going to die. They're at the top of the Mount Olivet, and Christ is weeping. They're going down in the mountain. In the heart of those apostles, they were terrified. But what did those apostles do? Today was a day of a great victory for those apostles, because they were petrified when they went into Jerusalem, and they thought they were going to die. And they were sold the seriousness of Christ, weeping as they never saw him weep before. And, and then they, they were we, was weeping, they went into Jerusalem, and they were ready to die. They were terrified, and, but they had to stay next to Christ. And what happened? Instead of being put to death as they expected, there came a great praising, and there came a great victory. So that saints, so the Lord Jesus Christ would teach his apostles, things aren't, aren't always going to happen the way you expect. One day you will expect to die and you will receive glory. A few more days from now, you will think the danger is over, but then you will find that I'm going to die. He's teaching his apostles. They're terrified this morning as they go into Jerusalem, and they think they're going to die, but they say, oh, maybe we're going to die today, but Thomas was right. Let's die with him. Let's stand close to him. And they stayed close to him. These same apostles were brave on early from home Sunday morning, who when Holy Thursday night would come, they would be afraid and run away. So they were still weak, but they made a right choice. And as they were going with Christ in Jerusalem, they then saw all the people come and praise them because of two great miracles. The man that was born blind, who had just been cured a few days before, and Lazarus, who was just raised from the dead the day before. And Lazarus was raised from the dead, and, and then also they said the Jews decided to kill Lazarus. They wanted to kill Lazarus. They still didn't repent. And the people came and praised him. And they threw palms to his seat, Lord of the King of Israel. And now all of a sudden it's safe to go into Jerusalem. And there was a victory of Christ. This fits with the next stage in the history of our church. We are not yet in the time of the Antichrist. We are in the time preparing for the Antichrist. The world's ready for the Antichrist to come, but he will not come yet. What's going to come ne next is the victory of Palm Sunday. This is what's next in the history of the church. That there is a great crisis now, and some may die martyrs, but there will not be a defeat of the church. There will come a miraculous victory and a great glory of the church, so that Christ showed to his apostles. He wanted them to know before Good Friday, I do what I want. This crowd doesn't like me. They're angry because of the eat my flesh, drink my blood. They're disturbed by my ways. But if I want them to follow me, I can turn them in one instant to follow me because I am God and I can do whatever I want, whatever I want. And today I want to walk into Jerusalem in glory. That's my decision today. It's a good day to walk into Jerusalem in glory. It's not a good day. They all hate you. They want to kill you. I think it's a good day. <laughs> Who determines what is a good day? 
Who determines what is a bad day? God determines it. And he's trying to teach his apostles. Great bravery came into the heart of St. Peter. And a few days later he would say, Every one of you, everyone else here denies you, I never will. Your heart is good, Simon. Your heart is good, Peter. But a minute and I say unto you, before the cock crows three times, thou shalt have denied me twice, thou shalt have denied me three times. This very night, Peter didn't understand, but he would deny Christ three times. He would go out and weep bitterly, and he would come back a real apostle. Our Lord is not only forming our minds, he's forming our hearts. So many hearts are not being formed. Many people are attending the Latin Mass, but it's just a ceremony to them. They like the incense, and they love the palms, and they like the procession. The only problem is, when they come back with their palms, and they come back from their procession, what's going to happen? The doors are going to be locked. And they will say, Lord, when were you hungry, and we didn't feed you? When were you thirsty, and we didn't give you to drink? When were you naked, and we didn't clothe you? If only we knew, we would have taken care of you. I followed all the rules and regulations. I did everything right. Why are the doors closed? What thou hast done to the least of these brethren, thou hast done unto me. There's no mystery about what God demands. It may be in the near future, great sorrow is coming upon our nation by a great depression. And there will be many souls in the streets. There will be many ones suffering. And we must be in a position to try to help them. We must give them the food of the Holy Gospel. And give them food of bread. And give them the food for their hearts. We must feed them. As David Divas did not feed the one on the side of the road, that did not feed Lazarus. We must do not follow Divas, but follow Christ. And we're reminded of all this in this longest Mass of the day on Palm Sunday. But it's interesting, the heart of the Apostles is the heart of many Catholics today as they entered into Jerusalem. And Christ will have his victory according to his own way, and we must have confidence in that. We'll go to the, the Mass, it will be the first, will be the Mass without Mass, and then secondly, the actual Mass, and then, then, then we will have the conclusion in this longest Mass of, of, the, uh, of the year. And then in case we'll close with that, God bless you all then. In a brief explanation, we'll find there's someone who goes to a minute again.